Artificial intelligence really teaches you how to be humble because it teaches you everything you didn't know you didn't know. AI and heart health. That's what we're talking about today on Tomorrow's Cure, a podcast from Mayo Clinic that brings the future of medicine to the present. I'm Kathy Worzer. Thanks for joining us. Our first guest today is Dr. Rohan Goswami from Mayo Clinic. He's the Director of Heart Transplant Research and Innovation at Mayo Clinic Florida. Also with us is Javier Echenique, the co-founder and CEO of General Prognostics. GPX is developing the bloodless blood test. Thanks to both of you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. You mentioned, Doctor, that the technology maybe in due time, will prevent the need for transplantation. Can you dive into that a little bit deeper? Yeah, so I think that's it's 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 a kind of a twofold question. One would be um, how we can use the technology and some of the devices and the data to predict who's going to recover and not require organ transplantation. Um, and then on the flip side of that, you know, we're in the Department of Transplant here at Mayo. We're leading an effort called the Transforming Transplant Project, where we're looking to do exactly that um, to to avoid organ transplantation with different methods. So, um, you know, potentially being able to use AI and data to find pathways for organs to be three D printed. And so instead of transplantation, you can use your own cells to help 3D print an organ. So you remove the reject the rejection risk, you decrease the cancer risks after transplant. Um, and then also other pathways for um, using artificial intelligence to help us identify ways to intervene earlier, uh, maybe with technology or therapeutics or drugs that we wouldn't have considered in the past. Um, and so, so there's two different pathways to go about that. I, I think for us, the, the research um, that we're doing right now has really um, opened up an avenue that we didn't think was that feasible, which is true organ recovery and retaining your own organs, uh, which is kind of the gold standard for us. And so, you know, I think, um, you know, that's, that's, that's where I think the future would be really cool to look at. Javier? Sure. And, and building on the, the idea of not needing the transplant, using your own organs, right? So the, the, just to keep it real simple, I, uh, the problem with transplants is there just aren't enough hearts out there for the people that need transplants. So you're on a list for potentially a very long time waiting and competing with others for these few hearts. And any number of companies, I worked for them in the past, have created technologies to extend the lives of these poor souls waiting for a heart, but it's not a great life. And being on these devices can be really tough. So the goal is to prevent people from even getting into that state where they're waiting for that heart, right? And and simply put, the idea is if you can manage the care, the heart failure care of these patients from an earlier state much more actively and much much more accurately, uh, you could potentially avoid this worsening that gets them into the need for a heart, or at least push that out much further than currently. And so the use of a monitoring technology, whether it's implanted or our solution, could potentially make an, a real net impact in how long it takes a patient to get so bad that they need a transplant. I'm curious about the use of AI algorithms in heart transplantation. Can AI help you make the right decision? That's an interesting question. I think the AI may help us predict who would respond better to the transplant um, based on antibodies and risk of rejection. Um, but I still think, you know, in a field that is surgically driven, um, you know, being able to understand anatomy uh, to a degree of, of the touch that you have when you're looking at an organ. Um, you know, we, we often work with our surgical colleagues and, and get an offer at two in the morning um, and have to review all the data and everything looks good on paper, right? That's what I tell my patients. Hey, everything looks good on paper. Our last check is going to be when we go to the donor hospital, we open the chest of the donor and we look at the heart. Um, and, you know, we don't want buyer's remorse in transplant. And so if something doesn't feel right, um, literally, as the surgeons are, are looking at the organ, um, you know, we're not going to take it. And so I, I don't think you'd ever get a red light, green light. I think you could say low risk, high risk. The, the biggest role for, for AI, where, where I see it really helping transplant patients, to be honest, is to actually avoid transplant altogether. You can watch the full version of this conversation at tomorrowscure.com. 